Well, hello there, interested viewer, and welcome to this time-lapse of a procedural plant creation video. I made this seamless underwater scene for the 2023 November activity. I recorded everything I did and it took about 2 hours and 20 minutes. And you can watch all this in 15 minutes. If only everything in life was this easy and fast. And as a bonus, you get my commentary and nice and soothing voice all along the way. Some might argue this is a bogus bonus and prefer to listen to their own music while watching the time-lapse video. Please feel free to do that. But in my elaborate commentary, I'll try to not only describe what you see me doing, but explain the thought process behind what I'm doing. Let's see how this works out. Let's get into geometry nodes in Blender. To start things off, I distribute a lot of points on a grid, also known as a plane, and instance a short mesh line with 10 segments on each point. And use a scale instances node to scale each of these lines randomly along the z-axis. More randomness gives everything this natural look, just like plants tend to grow. For this displacement, we use a set position node and the values of a noise texture to displace along the x and y axis only. This gives us this fizzy curly look for the plant stems. For this to work, we must use a realize instances node. I multiply both the x and y of the noise texture values with the set axis values of the pure position node and not with the set values of the noise texture like I tried and failed to gradually make the stems more wiggly towards the top. Subdivision service rounds off the chagginess of the wiggliness. Mesh to curve and then especially the curve to mesh operation allows us to add volume to the wiggly lines. Piping the same set coordinate through a map range and flipping it upside down allows us to slowly thin out the stems towards the top. The multiply node behind this controls the overall thickness of the stem. I use another set position node to displace the grid that acts as a ground plane with the values of a noise texture. With a little math magic, like plugging the y values of the position vector into a sine and cosine operation and this back into the x and y, lets you loop the otherwise procedural texture along the y axis. I use this on my kaleidoscope shader tutorial you can find on this channel as well and learned it from Nodemaster Arendale, check out his stuff as well. After laying down a mesh line and instancing the ground plane along this line and some fiddling with the values that can probably be solved with some calculations, but I did it by eye, we have a repeating ground plane. All the stems for the plants will also be exactly the same on each instance. So we can easily have a seamlessly looping animation flying along whatever we make out of this. To not get confused by your own note tree, it's good practice to clean up what you did every once in a while. Selecting a few notes together and pushing the hotkey Ctrl J puts a frame around all selected notes. This helps a lot in organizing complex note trees. And F2, of course, lets you rename the frame. And next up, you can watch me throw a lot of math onto a basic grid and go completely nuts while doing this. Actually, I have no idea what to tell you during this, as I had no idea what I'm doing when I did this. It's a lot of math and it's good when you know which axis goes in which direction.
And the more you work with geometry nodes, the more you get used to this and kind of know what you're doing. Usually you would just model a leaf and import this geometry into geometry nodes. But this is the beauty of the activity called Nodewember, where I and everyone tries to do everything procedural. I guess you can say I got more experienced with geometry nodes just by playing around and doing this. So if pain has a name, it is modeling everything just from the basic nodes you have in geometry nodes. Well, actually I enjoy the process and like a good challenge and I'm even more proud when something interesting comes out of this. There is no right or wrong in this and you still watching this prove me right in the end. So what about clicking that like button right now? I can only thank you for this. This helps the channel and me a lot and of course motivates me a lot to create more artworks, more music, more tutorials and also more time-lapse videos like this one. Ooh, look at that! I figured out leaves are not flat, they expand into the third, third dimension. dimension. <laughs> Pulling all these sliders to create another puzzle piece of a greater artwork is like a beautiful dance with the purity of mathematics. And I'm running out of things to say, as it is really hard to explain what I'm doing there. And sorry for my desktop calendar popping up into the foreground. I was so focused on this project, I didn't even notice. So we will have this blurred out blob up there for the rest of the video. And then, for some reason, I absolutely wanted to have a fold in the middle of the leaf. That was a tough, tough fight, but I guess I folded the grid. And in the end, after twisting and turning a simple grid long enough, I was happy with the form I got out of this procedural procedure. Once you have one leaf you are happy with, it's easy to rotate it and turn it into a leaf that grows on both sides of the stem. Of course, now it's time to resemble these mesh lines turned into curves to have a more even distribution of points and instance these leaves we just made onto these points. Then I realized it's always good to have less instances in the scene than you actually want to render when you are still working on the creation. And after quite some back and forth, I realize I need to capture the spline attribute I want to use so I can scale the leaves down towards the top of the stem. Without capturing the attribute before turning the curve into points, it doesn't work. After piping this spline value through a map range node and a lot of fiddling and diddling and fiddling and diddling and back and forth and fiddling and diddling and more fiddling and fiddling and diddling with all these different values and back and forth and fiddly diddly fiddling I finally settled on a leaf size I like. The rotate instances node of course lets us rotate those leaf instances. I plug some small random values into both the x and y value to add a subtle variety for a more natural look of the plant. Shrinking the nodes tidies things up and the id gives a different random value per instance. With the math magic I rotate the instances around their internal set axis which is along the stem in relation to where they are on the stem. Powered by the spline length of the underlying mesh line turned into a curve and instanced onto the ground plane.
Now it's time to clean up the note tree some more. Then test how the ground looks together with the plants. Only to find out that the ground loops, but the plants don't loop with the ground. This is a rather easy fix, but still requires quite some note noodling and plugging around and not screwing things up, of course. Well, 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 turns out the repetition for the loop finally works. So I can put down some set material notes for the ground, the stem and the leaves and get ready to create a procedural material. This is still November. I still do some cleanup and after that finally switch to the shader editor for more 2D proceduralism and beautiful colors. I only made two materials and to better see what I'm working on, I give both the ground and the plant material a single flat color. Somehow I was bugged by the form of the leaves along the stem, so I replaced the map range node with a curve node. The way the leaves get smaller towards the top looks way more elegant when the value controlling this goes through the curve node. Once I'm happy with this, I can continue shading. So it's time to pipe out a lot of colors and gradients and values from geometry nodes into the shader editor. We do this with a store named attributes node. The first value I want to include into the shader is the gradient all along the stem, defined by the spline factor. This is a value from 0 to 1 and nothing more all along each spline, which means along each stem. Of course, this gradient goes into a color ramp. Going from dark to bright, with the bright color at the top, is just how plants look usually. Then I add a translucency shader, and you also use an add shader to combine the translucency shader with the PBR shader. Then I multiplied a Voronoi texture with a noise texture to get an even more interesting random texture, which we will use in a minute. Then I grab another gradient factor from geometry nodes and mix both the gradient along the leaves from bottom to top and the gradient along the stem for more variety and more control over the individual colors of the plants. These interesting green tones go through an RGB node and a U saturation value node to turn them into a dead plant orange brown color. And this gets mixed with the original interesting green colors with the just mixed up noise texture as mix factor. Then I dial down the roughness and up the sheen a bit to my liking. These settings are highly subjective and underwater is always a bit different. I set the subsurface scattering value to 0.005 for a very subtle view under the surface. And for the subsurface color, I used the same color as on the surface, but brightened up a bit with the color curve node. Mixing up noise textures is always fun to do and good to have. I used this new random noise to mix the base color consisting of various hues of green with a darker version of itself, shortly before shifting the color hue to the dead leaf brown color. And the way the plant now has darker and brighter spots, it also gets different reflections on its surface by using the same noise texture with less contrast and more closely related gray tones as a factor for the roughness of the PBR shader. And the same underlying random noise texture used both for the roughness and partially darkening the base color now also goes into the height of a bump map to have some kind of relation between the dull and shiny parts of the surface and the surface unevenness of the plant material. I was aiming for a more waxy look for these underwater plants, so I set the strength value of the bump node to a very subtle 0.05. And that's it for the plant material. I was not happy how the stem and leaves get smaller towards the top and changed the calculation from using the set values to using the spline length of each stem as a driving factor.
Those 0 to 1 values along the spline are way easier to control with a curve node that only accepts values between 0 and 1. Now let's get to the material of the ground plane. It is mostly covered by the plants, so we can do this quick and dirty. Capturing the loop position vector gives us the fitting coordinate for every noise texture we want to use for the shader. Cranking up the details and sending it through a color ramp with dirty brown tones is fitting for a ground plane. Plugging more noisy noise into a bump node with a very high strength level gives us a very rocky rough ground plane more than good enough to be visible only in the background. After that I just added the camera flight animation looping after the same distance the ground plane is deep and a lot of compositing which I didn't record. Compositing is mostly making small changes, waiting a long time for the render to finish, doing another small change and so on. To make the loop seem endless I composited a mist pass in and gradually faded the view into the distance to a bluish water tone. You can get this file on my Patreon, where you can support me and the channel, or on Gumroad. Link is in the description. If you like these creation time-lapse videos, tell me in the comments and I'll make more of those. And I already did one of those for last year's November, where I created a procedural iceberg frostland. It's on your screen right now, together with more watch recommendations. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching until the bitter end. And that's all folks. TT out.